meetings to order. Uh, today is Tuesday, Tuesday, March 23rd. Uh, Finance and Operations Committee. We're meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. And we will start with the financial report from Matt. Thank you, Lou. We're going to look at our 2021 financials year to date as of March 19th. Our current report forecast is projected at $556,211 under budget. We were at $505,000 under budget last period in February, so an increase of about $51,000. Get into some of the detail here, starting with salaries. We have a new item, unbudgeted expenditures of $125,000 based on our daily and long-term subpositions. And you'll see in the next bullet that there's no, the net is the same. We're looking at potential savings of about 425 from our teaching staff. Last month, that was 300. I had just misplaced where we had some of our long-term subs. They were not district hires. They were contracted through Kelly. So we're looking at 425 less than 125 is a net savings of 300, which was the same reported in the prior period. It was just under the teacher account. Uh, looking at our projected tutor hours, we're looking at savings of about $50,000. This was at 25 in the February period. And then our anticipated para and substitute para hours and wages is 75,000. That's the same as it was in February. Under benefits, our unbudgeted expenditure number of 45,000. This is up 3,000 from the prior period. The only change is the unemployment uh, overage, we're looking at 15,000 over budget versus 12 uh, that was reported in February. Okay. Potential savings were just under $50,000. The only change here is the last uh, line in that bullet, actual workers comp insur insurance premium cost is $24,000 under budget. So that's a nice savings that is realized for the year. Uh, purchase professional and technical services. We have potential savings of 142500 And the only adjustment here for March as compared to February is the anticipated legal costs. We're looking at savings of $75,000 to budget, and we had reported $60,000 in February. The next section, purchase property services, potential savings of $30,000. This is the result of limited spending and in instructional repairs and maintenance due to our attendance and the hybrid model for most of the year. We had projected 25,000 savings in February. We just bumped that up to 30,000. The big section with tuition and transportation is our other purchase services. We have unbudgeted expenditures of 775,000. And the major driver, this is an increase from the prior period. We're looking at our outplacement costs at private facilities and also the decrease or anticipated decrease in state excess cost reimbursement. It's at $725,000. We were at 620 in February. And this is a result of finalizing some of our outplacements and the related services they're receiving and getting the actual invoices from those providers. And Matt, I just want to interject there uh, before you go on that uh, I just signed a registration uh, document today uh, for a student that's moved into Weathersfield uh, that is attending River Street School. So we're going to have to, yeah, look at an adjustment there. Okay. Yeah, that's a big one. That's six figures. Yeah. But it's, it's prorated, so it right. shouldn't have too much of an impact. And the offset under other purchase services, potential savings of six seventy nine. dollars uh, We're looking at we had eliminated some in-town special education transportation routes, 150,000 projected savings through year end. We had reported 100,000 in February. The uh, out of district special education transportation, 200,000 projected savings. That's the same as it was in February. Athletic transportation, we have increased the potential savings from 30,000 to 45,000. Now that we're essentially complete with two seasons, the fall and winter, um, our field trips, those anticipated savings are the same as they were in the prior period. And then the only other change is the magnet tuition savings is down to $10,000. We were at $40,000 in February, and we received some invoices related to special education magnet students, so we had to decrease that a little bit. 
under supplies, we have potential savings of 50,000 and 25,000 is coming from instructional supplies throughout the district. That's the same as it was in the prior period. And we have a new item here, projected savings related to administrative and office supplies. That's another $25,000. And that's just looking at our analysis of where we are current, our current spend versus the prior year and forecasting out through June. So we're still in great shape at 556. This number, we still have two major variables, which is the state excess cost. We received our first payment, but we never get any definitive percentage amount that the state is reimbursing us. So we're doing our best to analyze and project through the end of the year. And we're also waiting on Hartford Public Schools to reimburse for the choice students who receive special education services. So provided there's no dispute and we receive that funding, this 556 should hold and I think it's a little conservative as well. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah, I just wanted to say to Matt that the print is small, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on three pages. I'll take it to four next month. Uh, Oh, that looks good. Um, 21, 22 budget discussion. Yeah, so not much has transpired since the presentation before town council. Um, we can talk about what's anticipated. We can talk about some of the ESSER funding or we can save that for other business. I don't know if there's any questions about uh, the timeline for next year's budget. I don't think we have a set date for the joint session, do we? Chuck, do you Michael, I thought you said there was, isn't it like April 15th or something, Michael? April is tentative. Typically it's the third Monday in the month of oh, April, April, which would put it at April 19th. Um, I'm not 100% certain that that's exactly what date it's gonna be. I know last year it was uh, pushed out further into May. Um, I understood, I, from my understanding at least, the uh, town council wanted to get the budget done by May 15th and didn't want to stretch it out any further. So, um, but I don't have anything definitive at this point in time with regard to dates. Um, Matt or um, so Lou, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So Matt or Michael, the ESSER funding. Um, do we have a definitive? I know, I think, Chuck, you got a call from Larson on some of the federal funds at 2.7. Do we have definitive amounts and do we know when to ex we're going to expect the money? Th those kind of um, questions been answered? Yeah, good, good question, Kenny. Um, you're referring to the uh, American Recovery Act funds. Um, and that was the letter that I shared that uh, Chuck and I got from uh, Congressman Larson. Uh, yeah, that, sorry about that. I said Esther, but I meant the American Rescue. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And we, we actually have something in other business with regard to Esther that uh, is a follow up to uh, what I had provided in the Friday update last week, a little uh, snafu at the state level with regard to that. But um, the Recovery Act funds at this point in time, we do not have a definitive number. Uh, the number we received from uh, Congressman Larson is the only number we have. Uh, the state has not received its allocation from the feds yet, and I learned that today through our HASA meeting with my Hartford area colleagues. So we're still waiting for the actual amount. Um, again, my hope is that it is as close to that $2.6 million number that uh, Representative Larson had provided us. Um, you know, there is some variability there as the state gives out the allocation, but we think it'll be largely in that same uh, venue. With regard uh, to the ESSER funding, just so that you know, um, last Thursday I got an email from the state with regard to a webinar for superintendents. Um, so I had both Matt and Sally come in last Friday morning uh, to participate in the webinar to hear what was going on. And um, as you may recall, when we got our ESSER funding, the original ESSER funding amount was approximately $1.1 million. The state then pulled it back and said, wait a minute, we made an error. We calculated off the wrong fiscal year. So sent out a revised figure and that figure went up to the 1.214 uh, million. 
our meeting on Friday was the state getting us all together to say that, wait a minute, we made a mistake. And the original allocation we gave you of 1.1 million in change was the accurate number. So for us, that was a reduction of just shy of $70,000. I wanna say 69,966 was the number. And the state said, because the error was theirs, that they would hold all districts that saw a reduction in the ESSER funding harmless. So that means that we will still get that um, same amount we were originally promised, and that's the 1.2 uh, million. So we'll have to uh, submit a supplemental application for that um, Delta money, that 69,000, um, and that'll be embedded within the grant application. So that's the upshot. Again, the state provided its deepest apologies. Um, they are going to bring in an outside party um, to review their fiscal operations, just for transparency's sake. Uh, and then where that funding is going to come from, when the feds provided that ESSER funding, there was a 10% uh, holdback that states were allowed to be able to, to keep. So that funding will come out of that holdback. So um, that's, that's the story with the ESSER two funding. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Michael and, and Matt and anyone, um, in, in this funding, are there parameters, uh, and I spoke of this right before the town council meeting, because I think they were licking their chops to think that they could get a hold of some of this money that was meant to be for um, an emergency in education. And um, I'd hate to see it taken away because it wasn't earmarked for something for the children, mm -hmm. such as special ed, summer school, um, you know, tutorial programs. Do we have anything like that? Did they send us any? Yes, with regard to the ESSER funding, and thanks for the question, Bobby. With regard to the um, ESSER funding, I actually shared that uh, at the uh, council meeting in my presentation, and you have gotten that uh, twice in your board packets. So it talks about um, addressing learning loss. It talks about uh, the issue of technology. It talks about supporting remote learners. And then there was one other tenant. The Recovery Act funding does not have the parameters set forth yet at this point in time. So we're still waiting for that guidance, but the ESSER II funding definitely does. And you know, we are currently working on our needs assessment. Matt, Sally and I met this afternoon uh, to talk about what this needs assessment will look like. And remember this funding is available over the course of the next uh, three years, correct Matt? ESSER two goes through September of 23, and then ARP goes through September of 24. So again, we're not looking at all at once, but we're looking at over the course of the next several years to be able to maintain programs. Um, as you know, summer school is definitely one program that's in there. Um, our research tells us that a one and done summer school program is not gonna work. So one of the tenants that we're building into the ESSER funding is to make sure that the summer school extends out uh, to the extent that we have this funding. Yeah, sorry if I missed it. Are these, these are, we're getting the funds or these are reimbursable? Funds? We're getting these funds, Lou. Good question. Yes, we're actually, we will be receiving these funds. Um, can we hear me? I'm back, I hope, for now. Go ahead, Chuck. My internet's horrendous for some reason. So, but my issue is, and I think I CC'd you, Lou, on at least one of the emails, some districts are using ESSER funds to supplement their budget, to supplant their budget. And Newington was one of them, and I believe West Hartford and Windsor locks. So we need to find a definitive answer if that's allowed or not. So what are they doing, Chuck? Explain exactly what they're doing. They're taking things out of their actual budget for next year and saying we're gonna cover that through ESSER funds. Why would they do that? Well, there's lots of fiscal reasons why they're doing that. I mean because it doesn't come out of your general fund and then you, it doesn't come out of a tax base. But it still has to be an allowable cost under the grant and fit into those parameters. Correct, but through talking to Michael, I thought the interpretation was you can't supplant, you have to supplement, but these districts are supplanting. Yeah, that, that's my fear. That, Matter, Michael, can you guys? Bobby, as I explained, as I explained to Mr. Forrest on Monday night, they can't tell us that we have to use the ESSER funds for whatever they cut us. So their cut is their cut, and then we do what we want with our budget. Yeah, 
I know that, but. But it's possible they could use, oh, go ahead, Bobby, you first. But I think it gets into people's minds that this is, you know, play money that they just sent us and that this could supplant our budget. This isn't play money. Our, our kids just went through trauma and the school system has gone through an awful lot. I think we really need to defend the fact that we need this extra money for families, our fragile families, for um, children with trauma, um, for children who are behind in their academics. It's, you know, you've taught a classroom. It's very hard to get kids to catch up. Uh, this, this really could be, uh, th this could be quite a chore. And Chuck, to your point with supplement versus the plan, I've heard it both ways coming from the state. I've heard that, no, you're not supposed to supplant. And then I've heard, yes, it's okay. So I've seen it from both sides. And, you know, judging by how the state was and not getting the allocation right, I, I don't have a lot of faith that the state's necessarily going to get this right either. You know, I also look at it from the perspective of we're meeting this evening and where is our budget? We're about half a million dollars under budget. So, you know, we also have that. What will we do with that funding over the course of the rest of the year? Is the expectation we'd be returning that? Um, and then, you know, when you look at some of the items, let's take a look at the summer school, for example. Summer school was originally in the proposed budget. Um, I took that out so that we could participate in the uh, teacher residency program. And that uh, summer school will come out of the ESSER funding and that is an allowable uh, expense. So. Again, I don't know what other districts are doing. I don't know if um, like Windsor Locks was in the same fiscal position we were, that, that I'm not sure. But um, again, I think, you know, trying to strike that balance, I wanna make sure that we're responsible with the town, uh, but on the same token, we do have to provide supports for our students. Um, obviously the social emotional piece is a big one. Um, and that's one of the tenants that we're talking about. So adding additional contracted support to support our families and our students. That's something that's not in this budget. I didn't put it in. And you know, another one of the things to realize here, the budget came in at 2.7%, not at 6%. So we're banking on some of that ESSER funding to be able to provide the additional supports that we desperately need to support our kids. So, I mean, Sorry. I guess don't take, my, don't take my comment or question as I'm supporting using it. I just want to make it clear of the, the, the ability to use it. I think the town worked with us well last year, Michael and Matt, and I think you can attest to it. And we got to a, they gave us a budget that was very workable. Yes. And we returned ultimately to the town last year, Matt, how much? Oh, 625 that offset the health insurance fund and then another 118 that went to the 2%. Correct. And we're well above that this year. You think about the math curriculum we bought already. I mean, so we're well above the savings as well. Yep. So I think we're doing a good job fiscally. Yeah, I totally agree, Chuck. And the same holds true with the technology as well. That's another pressure point we were able to utilize out of this year's budget to avoid having to add that to next year's budget. And the argument also is that, I mean, Michael could have put those things into this year's budget, gone through the process, and then and the town could have said, well, use your ESSER funds to pay for them. And we would have taken them out and we would be back at the same spot we're at currently. So we've, sta we've saved a step in doing that. <laughs> Any other business? Yeah, I've, I've covered the ESSER uh, situation. Any other questions with regard to that? Um, they did extend the deadline for the submission of the grant uh, to April 19th. So um, we are currently working on the, that process now. I'll just mention the uh, food service program for April break. There will be public notification that Chartwells is going to offer pickup on Monday. I don't even know what the date is. The first Monday of vacation there. They'll offer breakfast and lunch Monday and Tuesday, pickup on Monday. And then they'll do another pickup on Wednesday to get parents, guardians, students through the weekend. So it'll be five days. They'll have some frozen meals. They'll include reheating instructions, but that'll be publicly posted coming up soon. Okay. 
Kenny, do you have a question earlier about? I'm all set now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. If nobody has anything else. No. I'll just, uh, just totally unrelated, Lou, but I'll take the opportunity um, and this may be to Michael and Chuck and also uh, for our board meetings. Is there any um, plan, and I'm not saying I want to do this, but to have these meetings in person in the next, before the school year is out? Have there's been any discussions about both these meetings, the finance and the regular board meetings? Uh, a very valid question, sir. At this point in time, the governor's executive order expires at midnight on Monday, April 19th. So whether or not it's extended um, remains to be seen. Uh, I do have a governor's municipal call tomorrow at five. Um, I'm sure that's gonna come up because there are many municipalities kind of in the same boat. Um, right now, as I am sitting here by myself in council chambers, it is not set up for the public. Um, I'm hopeful that they're going to reopen. I'd love to see us come back into uh, um, you know, full session here where everybody's here. It's awful lonely here, I have to tell you. <laughs> So, but I'll have more information, Kenny, as soon as I find out more definitively. I know from the state level, the governor was looking at all the executive orders. I think some are just going to fade out and expire. There are others that he may end up extending. So that remains to be seen. We, we appreciate the, you being there and holding down the fort while we get to relax at home and I'm in a sweatshirt, but um, I'm, <laughs> so thank you. But um, I, and maybe you don't know this anecdotally, do we know if other town school boards or councils are meeting in person or is the order subject to their, they're not allowed to? No, there's people I mean, meeting in person. Yep, some are. So that, is that our our decision? Case, was, so, it, it's our decision, but in, in accordance with the governor's recommendation, we've continued to meet virtually. Is that is that fair? That is fair. But and it is our decision. The, one of the things that I hear from Charles Brown on a weekly basis is the fewer meetings that you have in person, the less risk you have. And again, you know Charles is conservative, so that's that that's been his track. Understood. And I'm I'm happy to see you guys like this, but well, just I'd rather have know. I'd I'd rather have all of you. Yeah, we have to wear masks and whatnot, but I'd rather have everybody in here, quite frankly. Even if we pet our shots, you still have to have a mask. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So thanks for the question, Kenny. And I'll have an update um, um, in this Friday's update with regard to that. Thank you. Kenny, I know some of it has to do logistically about how many people we could have in there because you couldn't live stream and have us in there because like when that day Michael and I tried to live stream together, the feedback is horrendous. So it, you couldn't do like a Zoom and have five board members and four at home and the public. It's just logistically is, an, is, is the issue too. And I know that's what some other boards have had issues with. But a lot of boards seem to be virtual still. Got it. Thank it, you. The other thing we looked at too was the potential of being able to do like a hybrid over at the high school. And we checked with the IT team to see if we would be able to simulcast it through YouTube and you know have some people in the auditorium and some in the gym. And they didn't feel it was feasible with the technology to be able to make it work. But again, the sooner we can get back in person, I would much rather do staff student recognition where I would have students here and you know be able to see the public as opposed to this. Thank you. Not wanting to disappoint Chuck, um, given the timing of 628 and ending early. Um, does anyone have any other business? We'll take a motion to adjourn. Rumble. Um, second. Thank you. We will see everyone at seven. Thank you, everyone. Nice.